In this film, I will try to explain the Heckscher-Rolin theorem, and I'm going to use an exam question from the 7th of June 2013 as a base for that. In the question, we're given uh, some facts, and we are looking at two different countries, Sweden and Morocco, and we're looking at two different goods, industry robots and handmade rugs. Since uh, the name Handmade Rugs is rather obvious that that good should be uh, labor intense, and therefore we can make the assumption that capital intense good would be the industry robots, based for instance on the fact that we normally use industry robots to produce more industry robots. Sweden, which is a rather small but rich country, would be capital intense, uh, capital abundant, and uh, therefore the production probability frontier in Sweden would be that we could produce relatively much of the capital intense good industry robots, but not that much of the labor intense good handmade drugs. When we're looking at the autoke situation, that is when we don't have any trade, we want to have a uh, achieve as high utility in, in society as possible. So the CIC, the community utility curve, would be as high as possible. And that indicates that we want to have a tangency here between the production probability frontier, what we can produce in the country, and the utility function, which, which indicates what we want to consume in the country. So, in this case, we end up that the slope of the production probability frontier, the MRT, the Marginal Rate of Transformation, will be approximately one half. So, we have to give away one half rug to be able to produce one more industry robot. That indicates, of course, that we also will have the same slope of the indifference curve, so the marginal rate of substitution between uh, handmade rugs and, and industry robots will also become minus one half. So the consumers are willing to give away one half of a rug to be able to consume one more industry robot. When we look at Morocco, that country has much more inhabitants and is not as rich as Sweden. So we make the assumption that it's not that. Uh, so we make the assumption that Morocco is much more labor uh, abundant than, than Sweden. So we're going to come be able to produce much more, relatively much more handmade rugs than industry robots in, in Morocco. So the production probability frontier would look something like that. If we make the assumption, the next assumption, that uh, we will have the same utility in the both countries, we will have the same utility function, and therefore we're going to end up in a situation where we have tangency in this position in Autoke when we don't have any trade. So the slope of the production probability frontier in, in Morocco will be approximately minus one and a half. So the production cost of um, producing one more industry robot will be equal to the value of that one, since it's the slope of the utility curve as well. And that indicates that as we see minus one and a half, so we have to give away one and a half handmade drug to be able to produce one more industry robot. So what we have here is that in the Autica situation, we will have that production is equal to consumption in both countries, in each country, um, but we will have different relative prices. And that is the base for all international trade. As long as we have different relative prices, there is gains to be made. So what happens then if we introduce a, a trade between these two countries? Well, we start by looking at the, the starting position where we have an autoke situation, which I've grayed out a little bit here. So we had an autoke position in, in Morocco and we have the autoke situation in, in Sweden. Sweden and Morocco will try to produce more of the good that they are relatively good at, which they have some kind of, of comparative advantage in. So in this case, Sweden will try to produce more and more industry robots and therefore will have to give away production of handmade drugs. And vice versa, but for, for um, Morocco will indicate that they want to produce more handmade drugs 
and therefore they have to reduce the production of industrial robots. This will continue and as long as we have different relative prices in the two countries. That is, until we have the same relative price. So what we see here is that we draw one straight line that's tangent to, to both production probability frontiers. We will end up that the, the cost of producing one more industrial robot expressed in handmade rugs will be equal in both countries. So we see here in Sweden, we will end up that in Sweden production, the SP point here will be that we're going to produce that amount of industry robots and that amount of handmade rugs. So we have definitely increased the production of industry robots and decreased the production of handmade rugs compared to the Autica situation. And when we look at Morocco, we will have the same situation. That will be the production point, the production bundle in Morocco. So we're going to produce that much of each good here. So that amount of industry robots and that amount of handmade rugs. Since we made the assumption that we have identical uh, preferences in both countries, we will have to draw the utility function like that, which will be valid with trade. And since this black dotted line here gave us the relative price in production, that indicates that that has to be the same price in consumption as well, the same relative price. So we're going to have a, a consumption probability frontier indicated by the black line there. And since this is the relative price that the consumers are facing, we're going to look at the situation where the utility function in each country will be tangent to this relative price. So what we see here now is that since we have made the assumption that we have identical uh, preferences, we're going to consume equally much of each good in both countries. So we're going to con consume that much of handmade rugs in Morocco and in Sweden, and we're going to consume that amount of industry robots in Morocco and in Sweden. So when we look at this, we're going to see here that we will end up in a situation here where the marginal rate of transformation in Morocco is equal to the marginal rate of substitution in Morocco. So we will have a social optimum solution in Morocco. We will also have that the marginal rate of substitution in Sweden will be equal to marginal rate transformation in Sweden, so we'll have an optimum solution in in Sweden as well, and we will also have that this equal sign here, so we'll have equal equality all, all through, so the marginal rate of transformation will be equal to the marginal rate of substitution in each country. So when we look at this, we see that in Morocco they produce that quantity of handmade rugs, but they consume that much. So the difference between production and consumption in this case would be the export. And in Sweden we consume more handmade rugs than we produce, so this will going to be the import in that country. And since we make the, base, the, the analysis here based on two different countries, just two countries, uh, we must have a, a equality here. So the export in one country has to be equally large as the import in the other country. So the export from of, uh, rugs from, from Morocco has to be equal to the import of rugs in Sweden. And vice versa, of course. Since Sweden produces more industry robots than they consume, they're going to export industry robots. And in Morocco, they consume more industry robots than they uh, produce, so they're going to import it. And what we look at now is uh, something that in the book called tri Trade Triangle. So this is the fact that this is the, uh, in this case, the export, and this is the import. And then we look at the consumption probability frontier as the uh, third part of, of the triangle. In Morocco, that's the red one, and the same uh, area in Sweden is uh, the blue one. 